As a photographer, you're probably used to using Adobe Photoshop to work with your still photos. Thing is, is if you have Photoshop extended, you can open up video clips and do a lot of the same corrections. Here's how it works. In Photoshop, you simply choose File Open and navigate to a clip. Now, I recommend you copy the lesson files off the DVD-ROM from the book to a local drive that's fast enough for video. With Photoshop, you're really not getting real-time playback, so it doesn't matter as much, but it's not a good idea to work directly from a DVD-ROM. I'll navigate to those project files, and I'm just going to open up the clip called Photoshop Grade.mov. Select it and click Open. Now, Photoshop creates a new document that holds the video file, and if you choose the Timeline window, you can actually see this a little bit better. So I'll just say Window, Animation, and you see that we actually have an animation timeline. Let's just drag that up and put it there so you can see it better. There we go. If I click play, the clip plays in real time. And what you're seeing here is that the green indicates real time performance. So the first time through it caches, but the second time through it actually plays back a bit smoother. Now, let's go ahead and start to apply some color corrections. A couple things to know about the video clip. First off, it is a link. So you still need to keep the original video file with your Photoshop document. Another thing is, is if you start to add corrections, there's two ways to go about it. The first is an adjustment layer. Now, let's just choose Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and you'll see a list of all sorts of options here. If you're using Photoshop CS4 or newer, you'll also find the Adjustments panel, which works very well. For example, I'm particularly fond of the black and white adjustments. Click the little hand here, and you can click within the area and start to manipulate that property. So here I could push the blue sky much darker if I want in this conversion. And then click within here and adjust the exposure of the sign. Click on the letters, pull those much further down, and you see that you can roll your own black and white conversion. Another thing that's nice is the ability to actually blend those. So using modes like soft light, gives us a nice gritty look there as the blacks get crunched and it really sorts of pops. If you want to add another adjustment layer, just click the back arrow and you can use things like curves and pick from presets if you need to, such as medium contrast. We can open that up a little bit. And you see that we get great control. Now this process is no different than what you would do to a photo. And as you're working, it's going to seem pretty normal. So if you just stick with adjustment layers, you've got all those standard Photoshop adjustments like levels and curves and saturation and vibrancy. And there's a lot you can do. One of my favorite options, though, is to use the gradient map adjustment layer, which is very flexible. Now, if we go back here, you'll find it. It just takes a little bit of looking. And it's called the gradient map. So as we roll through here, you see across the top, it tells you the name. There's gradient map. Right now, a black to white gradient is applied, but you'll see there's lots of other ones, such as this nice sort of copper look here. By default, way too strong. But if you go in and change the blending mode, you'll see that you can get different options. So there's soft light or color. And you see it's a little more subtle. You could, of course, back off the opacity of that layer to get more of an aging effect here, where we get these nice browns sort of pushing, but we still have a hint of blue coming through in the sky. And that's adjustment layers. Now, if you want to harness filters, there's an extra step. Let's go ahead and trash these adjustment layers really quick here. I'll just shift click to select them all and drag them into the trash. And I'm going to go ahead and apply a filter. Let's do filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and crank that up. Now you see, oh, we've applied it. But as soon as we press play, the filter disappears. Well. When you apply a filter to a video frame, it only applies to a single frame. But there is a workaround. If you right click on the layer, you can go ahead and convert that to a smart object. Once you've done that, you can actually apply smart filters to the video clip. So we can go ahead and apply that Gaussian blur and really crank it up to a high value. Change your mind? Just double click on the filter name and you could tweak the values. You also have the ability to blend. So click the blending arrow here, and this gives you options to your blending mode. So we can go with soft light, and that gives us a nice sort of blooming effect. If we want to, we can take advantage of other filters, such as stylize, glowing edges. 
And you see there, we'll take smoothness up a bit and make the edges really thick and bright. There we go. Smooth that out some more. And then blend that. Double click on the blend mode there. And I'll use screen to drop out the dark area and pull the opacity down. And you see we're sort of getting a nice illustration type look there where it looks like we've converted the video to more of a watercolor type painting. And I like that. And another thing to sort of finish that out is just to do a vignette. And to do this, we'll use a solid fill layer. So if you click at the bottom of the layers panel, you could choose gradient, not gradient map, just the regular gradient. And I'll do a black to white gradient. Set that to radial, and you could play with the angle and reverse that if you need to. And I know you're not going to be surprised, but I'm going to tell you, use a blending mode. Just drop that into multiply mode, and the whites will drop out, and you could tweak the opacity to taste until you get a nice darkening at the edges, drawing the viewer's eye to the middle. If you need to, just double click on that, and you could tweak the scale, and even drag the middle point of that gradient so you could set it right over the subject and draw the viewer's eye in. Click OK, and it's good to go. Now you're saying it's in Photoshop. I wanted a video file. Well, it's easy. You just have to render it out. So if you say File, Export, Render Video, you get a standard box. You choose a destination where you want that folder clip to go and set that. Go ahead and choose a file format like QuickTime Movie. Click Settings and you get a standard movie settings window. So you could target any QuickTime codec that you have installed. So if you want to go to Cineform or Apple ProRes, it's all right there. I click Settings and you see we have all those options there and you can go right out to whatever you need, such as ProRes 422. Looks good. Click OK. Make sure all the size and everything is correct. If there was audio, you could include it. And take a look through there and decide what you want. In this case, all frames. And you just click Render, and it will go ahead and write that all out. Now, I'm not going to write the file in this case because I don't need to replace it, but you can do that on your own. It's really quite straightforward. And as you see, if you know how to do something to a photo in Photoshop, you can do the exact same thing to a video. The key is just to harness those adjustment layers and turn the video clip into a smart object, which opens up filters.